Alright guys, welcome back to another episode of Hajimari no Kiseki. Last episode, we saw Ren's future in the Aramis school. Cool. <laughs> and she's student council president. Pretty easily. Jared, stop it right now. Oh yeah, okay. Before we start this video, I currently have pizza coming along the way. I either want to eat pizza now, or do I just... Wait 40 minutes at least just to finish this. So we got this next one. It's called The Sword Maiden Moves On Beyond the Genesis. So let's get started. This will be the last video, the commentary for Hajimari no Kiseki. In the next video, you get to see what happens, you know, at the last episode. I know it sounds like pretty out scale, but like you'll see what happens in the last episode for those who don't know. Well, anyways, let's get started. Septeen counter, twelve oh seven, September. I'm sorry, but I cannot accept. I flatly refuse. Hey, Jared, lower your volume. Upon hearing what I said, the sturdy and bear like senior bracer Zin Vaitik had a troubled expression. What the Zin? <sighs> Same response again, eh? I said this before, but isn't it time that you resign yourself to this and accept it? Zin is a very respectful senior bracer whose strength and character stands out among all of us. When I was just a junior bracer, Zin had been the one guided and took care of me. That's why I don't want to make things harder for him. Unfortunately, these are two completely different issues. I also said this many times already. My strength and experience are not on the level of an a rank Bracer. I'm sorry, but I have to refuse again. Bracers are ranked according to their strength and their achievements with a rank being the highest listed rank. Just by being a rank makes you feel like you're carrying the entire weight of the guild. It's for this reason that you must adhere strictly to the qualifications when appointing someone to this rank. I still don't know why I was given promotion to A rank half a year ago. It's been a few years since I graduated from school and joined the Bracer Guild. I've been improving and getting stronger at my own pace. I've also completed many requests, so I can't say I'm a novice anymore. But I can for say for sure that I am not qualified for a promotion to A rank. Although I refused the recommendation, Lamont HQ would, stop, would not stop pestering me. As much as I ask about what my aspirations are or what I want to do, I honestly don't know how many times they've asked this already or if it will stop. As far as I can see it, you have the talent to excel in the world of an a rank bracer while you still reject the offer. I feel that Lamont HQ forces in to try and persuade me to accept the promotion. Zen just sat there, forcing a smile, crossing his arms over his chest, head tilted with a perfect look on his face. I feel that Zen has been overly praising me. I really don't want to be in the spotlight as much as I am now. In fact, not only have I been invited to a star in a movie, but I've also been requested to model for some magazine. The guild has already been super patient with me while I continuously reject their offers, but if I actually do achieve enough to earn an A rank promotion down the line, I wouldn't know what. What did I do? <laughs> so that's how it is. Your recent successes coupled with your pretty appearances must have captured a un lot of unwanted attention recently, eh? Seems like you're getting a lot more fans lately as well. Why not accept the offer to star in the movie? Maybe you can snag a war in the film exhibition. Zin began to laugh while he joked. Sometimes Jin just loves to joke around to unnerved people. Oh please, don't joke around like that. I'm not qual I'm not exactly bothered by the attention, but in the end, I'm still just a bracer. I'm not qualified to do all these things. I'm not joking, you know. If you don't relax every once in a while, you're going to stumble at a critical moment. For someone as serious as you, you need to relax a bit. I don't exactly agree that I'm an uptight, serious person, but I feel like that his words have some truth in them. Anyway, we seem to have deviated from our bit of our conversation. There's something that's been in my mind for quite some time. Why does the guild want me to promote me to A rank? I'll put it this way. Thanks to the Araboni rep reparations, Coward has seen unprecedented growth and prosperity. Everyone across Samiria is flocking towards Coward to try to strike it rich. I'm not an economist, but when Mirror begins to circulate heavy, more and more people join in. 
When that happens, tension ri tensions rise. That's the kind of situation we're dealing with right now. I began to see where Zin was going and decided to add my few words on my own. So it's because of the boom that's been a lot of issues began to spring up. Corporations are fighting each other. Jaegers and private military companies have become more active. Smaller gangs and mafia have begun to fight in the open. Order is breaking down. Yeah, the situation's only gonna get worse. Uh, fucking. Okay. That's why Laman HQ is trying to shrink our presence in Calvary, one of those initiatives to promote you. Our ace and shiny star of the young generation to A rank. With people like you in the public. You should be able to swim in new recruits, and with your talents, you should be able to stand up against any threats that stand in your path. i become sort of aware that this could be the case, but is it the reason? If so, if that's the case, then you should accept the offer. Recommended for S rank. What? You mean Zin is gonna be an S rank? But there's only been one S rank. I guess Zin's gonna be the second S rank. I recommend they should become S rank bracer. If we're talking about maintaining control, then having S rank here in Calvert will be a lot more impactful than a new A rank. Must be the pizza, Jared. Go get it. Sorry, guys. <laughs> when Zirn heard what I said, he awkwardly scratched his head. Alright, compare my skills to achievements versus Cassius. He has me beaten everything. How could I say I'm worthy of an S rank? Also, S rank is more of a ceremonial title anyways. Do you think an old man like me will get us some new recruits? Doesn't matter how strong you are, or how much you achieve, or how fit you are. Our job as a brace is to protect the citizens and the peace. That alone should be fulfilling, yes? I confidently reply. Well, I'm no position to talk about other people, so I won't pester you anymore with this. If you do change your mind on this, just let me know. And with our talk, our promotion ended. About the promotion ended here. Sin began to head out to take care of the request he accepted. Everything is still fine. I'm still me. So I'm guessing Zin refused the S rank, I guess. There was a time when I felt that I wanted to be a different person. I don't remember when it was, but it was definitely when I was still a child. At that time, I realized how small my world was. I longed to pray to hope that I would become a different person. There was a time when I felt that changed into a different person. There was an unforgettable memory when I was in school. An unexpected reunion was seeing an important object. I felt closer to my ideal me. However, that was just an illusion. There was nothing left in my hands after I let go. I failed to become a different person. However, I still felt that I should move forward. Even if my family are against me, I will insist on choosing my own fate. But on this path, I still haven't found anything similar to the past I long for. I just don't want to be anyone at all. Make sure you set up the table, Jared. Forward, move forward, forward. I can only think of moving forward. Oh hey, welcome. I walked into a cafe that I frequent a lot. The bartender greeted me with a usual wink and usual wave. He's a tall man with a unique style of dress. He loves to take care of other people. I've been to the Crossbell branch a few times to help out. Well, and I have to say the receptionist there and him have so many similar similarities. They should definitely meet one day. I walked up to the bar and took a seat near the corner. There doesn't seem to be many people today. The bartender came up to me with a smile and asked. The usual, I take it. I usually come here after I finish my bracer duties for today. Usually I get a simple meal and a coffee, but today I'm in the mood for something different. No, get me some alcohol. Beer would be fine too. After hearing my big order, Veritor went behind his counter. The wild bright placed a special looking glass cup in front of me. This will fit you a lot better than the beer today. The bartender began to spare a special talk tale. Surface began to shine like an azure sun in a clear sky, then turn on to the calming shade of, shade of jade. Bartender definitely sees how distressed I am and wants to comfort me. I thanked him with the bottom of my heart and asked him about the reason why I'm here. About that situation. Do you have any news for me? Bartender also serves as an intelligent broker. Not only does he have connections with the Bracer Guild, but he's got informants in both the mass media and underground organizations. However, there's a limit on what he can talk about. I swing by whenever I have some intel that I need. Yes, about that. I asked Dingo, I, but I didn't really get a lead or anything. You're looking to pretty some dubious stuff, you know? Besides, the other party's going to get smoked out soon enough. It's only a matter of time when. 
Is that so? Field investigation came up short, but your engineer expect to have captured someone? Seems like it, uh, this is an easy task. You can go ahead and get started, Jeremy. Worrying about it constantly isn't going to help. You need to relax a bit. You still have plenty of your cocktail left. Please enjoy it and savor it slowly. As bartender left, I began to sip quietly and so I thought deeply about the incident at hand. Root of the problem lies with the increasing amount of illegal drugs circulating. A lot of addictive intoxicants have been penetrated the market. Originally, the black market dealer Heyu was one of the ones that controlled this market. They regulated everything about the trading of these goods from pieces, prices to quantities. It's obviously something that we shouldn't be left on watch. Well, we can't deny that it's helped maintain some sort of order within the black market. However, in the past few years, a lot of shady organizations have begun to revolt against the norm. Our culprit is definitely one of those groups. Anyways, the reason the guild decided to take on the, the case was because of a case of missing persons and its possible connection to these groups. Last month, the police in the guild received a request to find two children under the age of 10 and a pair of siblings. One day, they just left home early to never return. The two children grew up in a family of commoners. The family environment was loving and caring. So this is definitely not a runaway case. I usually thought the children were kidnapped and held for ransom, but the family didn't receive any threatening letters or requests from Mira. Gilderman police assigned more people to take over the case, but the last few attempts were futile. They couldn't be found. Efforts were in vain, however, since it was discovered that children were at least last seen in a shady part of the city, a place where illegal drug trade was widespread. It's only speculation at this point, but we thought the children may have been seeing an illegal trade happening. Then they were captured, possibly killed, so there wouldn't be no trace. If that's the case, then this case goes on. Long, the longer this case goes on, the more danger the children will be in. These criminal organizations are not dumb enough to leave ample amounts of evidence behind, however, so they have been ki either killed or sold abroad by now. Whatever this situation is, we most likely will not get them back safe and sound. Of course, this is all speculation since we have no concrete evidence to back these claims. We also don't know which organization did it or find the base of whatever mafia is running the drug trade. Situation's a bit uncomfortable. If we want to take answer, we have no idea what to do or where to start. Only we can capture a suspicious person to interrogate them. We could break this impasse. But that would be a violation of not only the rules of the Bracer Guild, but, only, but also our core beliefs. We Bracers want to become a trustworthy partner of justice. We cannot resort to under using underhanded tactics. Not to be honest, there are instances where Bracers alone cannot solve it all, and the innocent people will eventually inevitably be hurt. We're just in a big dilemma. In case where Bracers alone are having a hard time. When I unconsciously said that, I began to see my mind as a person, someone with black curly hair and a blue luster, of nostalgic face rumors about him. A childhood friend of mine suddenly came back to the city a few years ago, suddenly found a job, questionable one at that. Seems that from time to time he ends up sticking his neck into disputes in the underworld too. Just what is that idiot doing? Leaving without permission, returning without permission. If we meet nowadays, it's just going to be awkward between the two of us. I spent a lot of time searching for him and a lot of years waiting just to look found out he took a job in some shady business. Anyways, because of my duties as a bracer, I cannot spend more time worrying about others. Besides, since you came back, why don't you see me? Don't you understand just how worried I've been? The more and more I thought about it, the more angry I got. I threw my cocktail. The alcohol only served anger boiling inside the rage more fiercely. My anger burned, it blazed. It burned ever so stronger until eventually only ashes remained. Distant memories started to flash before my eyes before disappearing. After all that, I was just began to feel discouraged. Why? Why did you just abandon me like that? I only blur out that line suddenly. I felt like I was a child once more. What if someone saw me like this? Still, thinking about the old days. A familiar voice suddenly rang out in my ears and sent shivers down my spine. I hurried to try to think of an excuse to explain everything. I, I just wanted to complain a bit, that's all. I tried to sound as calm as I could, but in reality, those few sentences were not enough. Even a few hundred would not be enough. By the way, I said it seemed to be devoid of happiness. If you can say that much with only a few sentences, that's pretty impressive. The man with glasses seemed to see right through me. Then he took a seat next to me. I didn't have any importance to set up this meeting. It was merely a coincidence. This person was just another childhood friend of mine. 
and older than me by one year. Although we went down different paths, the three of us used to always be together. If you're this worried, why don't you pay him a visit? You should at least grasp where he lives, right? How could I, after so long? When he heard me speaking in a little voice like that, I felt he was softly smiling at me. Forget about it. Don't worry too much. As long as we continue to drive for our own goals, we'll definitely all meet again. After hearing him say that, that caught me by surprise. It's not like you to say something sentimental like that. Well, I'm not like that fool. Anyways, let's have a toast. You have to get something non-alcoholic, though. Really, don't please don't treat me like a kid anymore. Dory began to reminisce about the past, and now that I think about it, I haven't chatted like this with him for, for such a long time. Although the two of us haven't drifted apart from each other, our work and goals leave us with few opportunities to chat like this. Oh yeah, you rejected your A-rank promotion, right? As expected from a C of a CID officer. This news has already reached your, your ears. Although this wasn't a confidential issue, he seemed to have a firm grasp on the situation at hand, which is expected is given, given his job. There isn't really anything bad blood between the bracers. Put public safety first from the CID in the CID. We strictly follow the president's orders. Our positions are fundamentally different from each other. I'm not going to urge you to accept it. He quickly paused for a moment, continued to speak with a more serious tone. We need a hero, more than ever right now. A hero. Just what does that mean? A realist like him would never say anything like this. I want to ask him about it, but he quickly cut to the chase. Regarding the dead case about those siblings. The CID is with you on this case. My other childhood friend can tur turn a fly and eye to my star self and continue to speak. He had some strong evidence about a certain organization at that district. We will be working with the police in accordance to our agreement. For the case, you can do as you see fit. After all this time, we finally have some intel to work with. Since it's intel from the CID, there's no reason to believe it's wrong. Anyway, it's time for us to make our move. Moving forward step by step, only recently I was aware I've been standing in the same place. If I continue on, I'll only become a different person. I could feel it deep in my heart, a very scared feeling. Fear that I want more or lose something or be hurt again. Thoughts like this make me hesitant to move forward. I don't feel like I'm very strong. That's why I've been striving to improve myself every day. Therefore, I pick up my sword and brandish it without hesitation. So if I come across in an unimaginable situation, I know that I can endure whatever challenges may come my way. I quickly sidestep to the left and shift the center of my gravity, and then I make a sharp turn to the right. I slash one of them with my sword. I take advantage of their confusion to charge and stab the other person. The two Mafia members crowd out one by one and collapse to the ground. These two are from the criminal organization I've been investigating thanks to the tip off a few days ago. Now I'm finally going to sneak into their base. Thanks to my childhood friend's intel, we find be able to put our full strength to use. Until enough wasn't enough to identify their entire base or actual base. The next day, Zin and the other bracers came up with a plan. We would split up and attack all possible bases at the same time. Seeing everything in front of me, I could tell I've won the lottery. I found their actual base. I found one over here. It's an intruder. Wait, isn't that girl in that magazine? Two more move members found me and won't give them a single opportunity. Quickly dashed forward, sung both of them as I passed. The two men didn't even have a chance to draw their weapons before they even fell. Those two dealt with, I head deeper into their base. They must have been alerted with an, about an intruder, because numerous mafia began to stream out continuously. There's the intruder. I've seen her before. She's that female bracers that to talk to town lately. That's not good then, right? What are we gonna do if someone like the immovable shows up? What the? You don't mean him? Stop cowering, you idiot. She broke in and alone. We have the means to deal with her. All of your members lunge forward, attack at once. There has to be at least 10 of them with even more streaming out of their base. I'm heavily up now, but it's gonna get tough to get through them with just me and my sword. But I'm waiting for Zen and the others is a smart move here. Time is up the instance, and the Sims will be in more danger. I'm going to eliminate them all to make sure the siblings will be safe. Even if there is a many enemies, there's nothing for me to be scared of. If they were trained soldiers, their formations attacks with the bulk of their strength. If not, their power will be proportional to their numbers, but these Mafia members do not look like trained soldiers. They are nowhere near the strength of someone like a Heiyu member. At best, they are like second or third rate soldiers. <laughs> Ooh. 
red shirts. Ooh. Even if their coordinator attacks them, sir, just a single person, they are just going to get in the way of each other tr trying to go for me. Numbers advantage means nothing if their strength has been diminished. Also need to pay attention to their movements and always be on the move. Enemy has a gun, I need to block their attacks of s s line of sight with other enemies. I need to make sure that all of their melee members are clumped together so they would hinder each other's movements. Once I spot a weak point, I strike. One, two. It's easiest to create a gap when the enemy is pushed back. I kept this in mind as I broke out into sprint once more, charging him at a high speed. I began to move erratically to throw off my enemy. Once I get near someone, I quick slash and ran past him as I run past him. Three, four. I get to outflank them, dashing in and out, always being aware of my position what's behind me. Soon I made it out of the back of the group. Their rear guard, their rear guard were all concentrated in the groups in the back. They raised their guns in a panic, but it was too late. Didn't expect me to break through like that. None of them are suited for close range combat. Dashed in and make short work of them with my sword. Five, six, seven. About half of them have fallen. The rest were stunned at what happened, began to lost the will to fight. Some of them began to charge recklessly in desperation in their rush. Some gunners misfired and began hitting their own allies. <laughs> well, that's convenient. You guys, you red shirts are useless. Once the battle reaches the point of my victory, is all but decided. Now I just need to keep my guard on tick down, run by one. No mercy. As I moved forward, I kept running into se several small groups of Mafia goons, but I easily swatted them down. Went on deeper in the complex, finally I found him, the leader of this Mafia group. This middle-aged man was patiently anxious about this luxurious and tasteless room. The moment- oop, The moment <laughs> he saw me, he started to tremble. You! How are you in here? What happened to my men? You mean you're useless men? I took them all out. Permanently. I responded calmly. The leader looked at me incredulous and shouted, You're joking! How can a silly girl like you single-handedly defeat my organization and all built that I built all by myself? I took this chance to get closer and draw my sword point at him. Almost immediately, I, I heard an ear-shattering wail come out from him. I'm not just some silly girl. I'm a bracer, you know. Don't worry, your men are all either unconscious or able and able to move. I don't take I don't take lives. Well, when it comes to the Trails series, we don't kill, so... <laughs> now come along and join them in jail. That's all I was gonna say, but I sharp glanced, sharply glanced at him and pointed my sword at his throat. Damn, I like this bracer. Just get straight to the point and rootlessly savage them. But before that, you're gonna give me some answers. You have no right to refuse or remain silent, understand? Yet a frightened expression began to tremble as he slowly nodded. Last one. A pair of siblings, a boy and girl under 10, went missing. Were you behind the kidnapping? He nodded. Really? Alright then. Are the two children safe? Where are they right now? Here. They're right here. The room behind us. They're still alive. From what I heard that I felt relieved beyond measure, the original mission has been completed. There's still things I need to know, however. I began to question about the Mafia itself. The Mafia that controls this region. You guys are really nothing special. I found this ledger of yours while I made my way through this place. You guys are just subcontractors, aren't you? Hearing that word, I felt it hit a nerve. He already continued to be silent, but also stopped nodding or shaking his head. His response already told me everything. Answer me. Which organization do you answer to? Is it A? D? The? I began to act tougher in the weeds out and answer the scared trembling man was about to answer when. So I heard some strange noises from the hallways behind me. Drew my saw and took off, prepared whatever battle may be ahead. To hear strange sounds in, sounds in the distance. See your voices kept ringing throughout the hallway. It was an eerie noise that made even more shudder. It became more and more clear as I ran. The music stopped. Uh oh. I thought I heard a few groans, but they were almost immediately silenced. Sensing something, I almost steeled myself, prepared to retaliate against attacks from all directions. Slowly moved across the hallway, and I saw the most horrifying scene in the location. In which I had just fought, all I could see were piles of flesh where there used to be people. Uh. It was not just one or two. The entire flung women consumed with corpses that I could see. Some of them had were decapitated. Oh my god! Oh my. Whoa, I'm gonna throw up, guys. Some of them had their interior organs ripped out in mints. 
Some of them had their heads crushed. Others still had their hearts ripped out from their bodies. Uh, all I could see was death. My means, which I cannot fathom or stomach. Before long, the floor was drenched by a river of blood. What the... F what cruelty? What kind of person would do this? Strategy a layer for forming was too much. I clenched my hands so hard that I began to tremble. Why did it have to be this brutal? What is the meaning of? Could it be? Oh no! Oh no! I just realized my mistake. I quickly turned around and rushed back into where I came from. I was too late. In the middle of the room, the leader was floating in the center of the room. Blood was dripping from his nose. He would no longer utter anything again. A massive sword was embedded in his chest. Fuck! Someone else is here, but but who? Who? He's definitely dead. Like his subordinates back out there, he didn't even be have time to scream. <laughs> Who are you? Try to hold back my anger and sound a bit more brave than I shout at the empty room. I look around the room and see nothing that the dead man in the center. I looked more carefully around the room and saw something. A distortion space along with a fuzzy outline. This is definitely some optical camouflage. Would it be more courageous of you to announce your first name, right? The beautiful ace of the Bracer Guild? Sounding like a man's voice. He sounded extremely arrogant and proud. Seems like he thought he was above everyone else. I unconsciously prepared myself for combat, but the man didn't react to my movements, instead continued to speak. Why are you so agitated? Stand down. There's no need to fight. I'm only here to clean up after the idiots got caught by the CID. After thinking about what transpired outside, I can't help but think. Clean up? The speaker doesn't even sound like they are human. Are you their partner? No. You're probably their superior. Correct, you are. The man spoke and casually tossed the corpse of the leader aside as if he was tossing a cigarette butt. You bastard. How could you do this to your own men? Damn. My own men? I'm afraid you misunderstood me. Didn't I say I was here to clean up? There's only trash here. Completely disposable. The only difference is that they're living or not. Assassin. Couldn't just find a way to communicate with him at all. Began to tremble. My body began to tremble. See with anger. Soon began to take action. You, you are an inhuman monster. As I came to my senses, I immediately made my move, putting all my strength and speed into my son, and made an unavoidable stab. However, he just slashed down the sword and parried my attack. Is at this moment I realized how strong this person was. He just effortlessly stopped my attack with perfect timing. His strength seemed limitless and his speeds as fast as lightning. That crucible form sword of his, although it was particularly camouflaged, it couldn't hide its strange energy. There was a strange silver and black pattern of both holy and devilish energies residing in it together. This was not an ordinary weapon. If I use all my strength and training, my odds of being were really, really low. But I told myself, I cannot let this man escape. I decided to attack him. If my frontal assault fails, I will attempt to flank him with as much speed as I could muster so I can strike, make strike again. He blocked my attack with ease. It's not over yet, though. I kept myself on my feet, continuing moving the attack, growing faster in each passing moment. What the so fast attack? Accelerate. Attack. Accelerate, attack, accelerate, attack, accelerate. Once I reached my maximum speed, I began to change my movements and quickly wrapped around him. I attacked him with all my strength and I camouflage outline this sword a bit. Success. Suddenly, if he had seen this move coming, he quickly drew his weapon, made a large arc in the air, and tried to strike me. Mainly, he put up a defensive posture, but the hit was so powerful it sent shockwaves all over my body. In spite of that, I was able to defend myself in the blunt round of the attack. The force of a fatal attack caused my body to quiver. My body was still trembling, but I managed to stand up and made eye contact with the man. The strength is overwhelming. That man alone can control the entire battlefield with skills like his. It's as if he reached heights of his power that any martial artist could hope for. Beyond that, it's, like, it's as if he reached enlightenment. He saw through my posture and I was bluffing and chuckled. Not bad, not bad. You're stronger than the Ruben suggests, eh? You made things a lot more fun for me. You're obviously extremely strong. What is your purpose for all this? I didn't think he would answer my question. He just stood there, thought about it for, for a while. Before responding, 
purpose? Hmm. It would definitely be for fear. Fear? I had no idea what was going on about, so I asked again. Fear is the driving force behind existence. Domination. Obedience. New life. Coexistence. And even order. None of this would have been possible without the presence of fear. That is why I am pursuing the ultimate fear. It's like the Tower of Babel in Crossbell. Half a year ago. Shane that it doesn't exist anymore, though. He said this in an excited, cheerful tone. I cannot see his face, but I can imagine what his expression looks like. There was no doubt this man is serious about what he said. You're mad. Huh. You'll understand what I'm talking about one day. If we continue to try to resist my plans idly like this, he put down his sword. It seemed like he was finished his work here. I'll give you a reward for your help. Clean up here. You'll find the two kids a bit deeper in the complex. Oh, before our next meeting, I do hope you'll work hard in proving yourself. He just turned and left. Wait, get back here! As I reach out with my hand, the ground began under his feet, began to go and shimmer. When the light faded, he was completely gone. He used some kind of transfer technique to escape. For my strength leaving my body, it's not because I relieved the kids were safe. In fact, it was the complete opposite. I know that I will regret, I'll have regrets down the line for not being able to beat this man today. Thought of that alone made my legs weak as I struggled to stay standing. Ha. Huh. So this is the real me. I've been the same ever since that important person left me. I'm just a little girl who couldn't do anything. My work here is still unfinished. I walked deeper, deeper into the place I found a small room at the end. Opened it down what seems to be a storage room. The two children I've been looking for were at the back of the room. They were huddled in the corner. The older brothers were shaking while the younger sister was leaning on him. I'm here to rescue you. You don't have to worry anymore. I'm trying best to speak pop and gently. When the girl, little girl saw my face, she began to bend and smile while the brother kept his head hung. Then slowly walked me in tremble while shaking his head at this trying to get away from me. Fear is driving, he's a driving force behind existence. The man's voice echoed through my head. Children are trapped in the prison of fear. I tried my best to upset the boy as I approached him. The closer I got, the more resistance he showed. When I was with arms reached, the boy came out and more, more and more agitated as if he wanted to scream, but no words would come out. Please, don't worry. I smiled at him and tried to comfort, comfort him. Suddenly, I reached behind me and grabbed a knife. I turned my head to see the girl holding a knife. What? She took advantage of me getting closer to her brother, trying to wrap around and stab me. She looked astonished and managed to block her attack, but her smiling expression had disappeared. The expression was blank as she was in the daze. Oh no. Too late. You're past the point of no return. Fear can dominate a person, it's just like he said. Maybe you two encountered something so frightening and awful that it forced you to try such a thing? To try and stab someone who came to save you, perhaps this was a result of fear taking over their heart and mind. As I grabbed the knife with my bare hands, I felt blood sliding down my hands. Doesn't matter. I continued to speak to the girl gently as I could. This situation isn't easy to resolve. Humans are not dri driven only by fear. We can choose to resist and use our courage to resist. It's like what your brother showed, uh, showed here. Despite him trembling, he still had the courage to attempt to alert me that danger was coming, to prevent his sister from making a mistake. It was next to him I was able to stop her attempt on my life. Please, there's no need to worry. No more worrying. Your big bracer sister is here to protect you. As I said the girl's words, I hugged the girl tightly. Bray, sir? As her words reached my ear, I could tell she was still empty, yet she was numb. You're right. I'm a bracer. I'm here for you. Really? I remember seeing Big Sister in magazines several times. I remember you. You were the sword? Oh, exactly. Although it's a bit embarrassing to use a nickname like that. At least it's easy to remember. As long as that name still exists, as long as I'm still by here by your side, I'll always protect you. I hugged the girl even tighter to protect her even from more harm to mend her broken heart. So please, no more worrying. Everything is all right now. The girl's expression began to change. It wasn't long before there were tears in her eyes and began to sob. Began to cry more and more. And eventually got to a point where she couldn't stop. It's at this moment the girl is free from fear. She finally gained her human emotions. 
You're still standing in the same place. Paralyzed by fear, unable to move? Even so, this is the honorable path that I have chosen. There's no turning back. There's no stopping now. So I finally decided. Later in the capital of Coward's Branch office, it seemed that the Mafia were trying to imitate that organization. Zin and I were discussing this case together. It turns out that siblings were witnesses to some illegal trading, so they were taken away. The Mafia only wanted to try and follow the rumor tactics of the organization to try to educate the children to come into being cold-hearted assassins. Damn. I think I hear the organization once again. It turns out their efforts to traffic drugs and educate them were poorly executed. Be caught not only by the CID, but the parent organization. Such a pity. If only I worked hard and handled it properly, they wouldn't have all died. Don't worry about it too much. Remember that the guild's mission is to protect the general public. This is the price you pay for entering that kind of society. If you still feel like it, if you're not strong enough, then, then take this mission's lessons to heart and use it to your next case. The siblings that I had rescued had to go through therapy for some time. It was said that they were able to go back to their original lives in the end. I mean, with that pair, it inspired me. Can't just be stagnant, make no headway. I have to keep moving forward. But even if I trip or fall down in the future, it won't matter in the end. We need a hero more than ever right now. I had remembered what my childhood friend had said. Even if it's a symbolic title, it doesn't matter. Even though I don't think it's the qualifications to be that hero, at least I could be the hope that eradicates darkness. I decided that this is the road I wanted to go down. The way if a qualified hero does show up one day and I'll be with them side by side. Alright, next up is today's main event. Zin turned to face me. He seemed to be a lot more happier than usual. The official documents from Alon will take me a while to get here, but we don't need to be that formal here. Therefore, Calvaris finally has a candidate to beat out the Purple Lightning's record for the youngest 8 rank bracer. Damn. Damn, so she's the youngest 8 rank bracer. Congratulations, Sword Maiden, A Rank Bracer, Elaine Claire. Damn. About what I expected. And the Sword of Me moves on, and it's about what I expected for, like, those stories. Anyways, this will be the last commentary video for Hajimari no Kiseki. Next video will be the true or the secret ending of the or the post game ending. Or what you could say, the start of Kuro no Kiseki. <laughs> but you'll see what it is, so see you guys all next time.